this small gadget shave hundreds, if not thousands of pounds off my energy bill. Let's put that to the test. When it comes to automating a home, we typically have one of two ambitions, solving problems or building that little feeling of luxury into our homes that one finds in a luxury hotel. For me, I hope to use the ZXT800 for the former. I want it to save me money. But before we try to understand how it could possibly do that, let's first understand what it actually does. Built to top of Z-Wave automation technology, this small box receives a wireless instruction from your automation system and it outputs infrared commands. Think of it as a Z-Wave to infrared converter or as a Z-Wave remote control. That means that you can use it to connect non-smart IR-based electronics to an automation system. For your entertainment gadgets, it's preloaded with 27,000 remote control codes compatible with over 8,000 brands. For heating and cooling, namely split systems, it comes with a further 3,000 remote control codes from 500 different brands. If I look around my house, that means that I could potentially control an array of electric heaters, split system heating and cooling systems, and a plethora of audiovisual systems from my theater to televisions and sound systems spread across the place. The ZXT800 also has an inbuilt temperature and humidity sensor just here behind these vent gaps, allowing you to use it to automate your heating, your cooling, your fans, your extractor fans with greater accuracy because you've got one additional measurement of temperature and humidity in the room in which it is installed. To understand how this all comes together, we can go back to the luxury hotel analogy from before. Using the ZXT800, you could set up an automation system whereby someone comes home and the television set automatically turns on to a pre-programmed channel. Uh, you could have it turn off as well when nobody is home if you're the sort of household where people leave the television running. You could also automatically turn down the volume late at night when things get a little bit too loud. Now, all of that is about convenience, it's about automation systems, but none of it tells us how to use this thing to save us money. I live in a house that has nearly 4,000 square feet. It's a single story, it's U-shaped, and it's arranged around a courtyard. So it's nigh on impossible to know if someone has left a, a light on or an air conditioning unit running on the other side of the house. This house is also in a part of the world where it snows in winter and it gets blisteringly hot in summer. So there are very few months of the year where there isn't a heater or a cooler running, and that's expensive. They're also the kind of things that get left on when we have guests. They'll turn it on, they'll leave the room to do something else, maybe watch a movie for a couple of hours. So the ability to use the ZXT800 to automate that, to turn things off when people aren't present, stands to save me a lot of money. It's a first world problem, but it's an expensive first world problem particularly now that the price of energy has doubled over the past 12 months. Thanks, Putin. So, how to get the ZXT800 running? First and foremost, on batteries. The ZXT800 takes three AAA batteries, which I'll be using in place of its micro-USB connection. After powering it up, I paired it with the daddy of all IoT systems, Home Assistant. Through the Home Assistant interface and the Z-Wave JS add-on, pairing the ZXT800 with HM Z-Wave stick was easy. The latter is my dongle of preference, not just because an internal staff poll tells us that this is the best Z-Wave stick that your money can buy, but because both it and Remotex ZXT800 are built with the 800 series version of Z-Wave Plus version 2. That allows the ZXT800 the ability to operate with an optimal connection in terms of wireless range, speed and security, and also with an optimal battery life performance, which Remotech promises to be in excess of one year with daily use. If you'd prefer not to change AAA batteries from time to time, then powering via a USB cable remains an option. Of course, if you're not running an 800 series Z-Wave system, all of this will still work for you. Z-Wave devices always being compatible with older versions of the standard. For those seasoned in setting up Z-Wave devices, you'll know that this part of an installation stands to be a breach. For the newbies, trust me, it's typically easier than assembling IKEA furniture. Pairing a new device with your gateway is seldom the most challenging part of any installation. But what from there? What comes after that initial installation? There are obviously further steps between connection and automation. I needed to tell the ZXT800 to communicate back with different electronics. 
I needed to tell it that my split system brand is Dakin, that my TV is a Sony, and which remote controls I wanted to replace. Such complexity is typically painful with Z-Wave, leaving you to code and change command classes in a way that starts to feel akin to mastering nuclear physics. Remotech have thankfully made this far easier. While, if you're a sadomasochist, you can set up everything via command classes, the best thing here really is to use Remotech's dedicated app. Available from both the Google Play and Apple App Stores, the app lets you connect to the ZXT 800 via Bluetooth and, after just a few taps, you're all set. Following the on-screen instructions, we'll get the app paired with the IR Blaster. Thereafter, you decide if you want to add an AC or an AV device. I started with AC, and you'll see that the list of brands natively supported totals from more than 500 and is just too extensive to show in this video. So I've linked to the list of brands for both HVACs and AV equipment below. The next step was as simple as grabbing my original remote control, pointing at the ZXC800 and pressing its power button. Now this part of the process actually took me a few goes before I got it right. Um, I didn't read what was on the screen. You hold the ZXT and the remote control two to five centimeters apart when you're sending the signal, when you're getting it to learn or you're you're teaching it what remote control type you use. And then the ZXT will have absolutely no problem reading the signal. If you do what I did and try to do it across the room, you'll have far less joy. Once the remote control signal was interpreted by the IR blaster, it was just a matter of using the on-screen control to test the connection, after which the full set of IR commands downloaded from the cloud. Adding in audio-visual control took only one additional step, setting the device type to television, as opposed to everything else that you can see on the screen. And yes, bottom right hand corner, even your dusty old VHS player can be automated. Elsewhere in the app, you can find a good set of control functions for the IR Blaster, including device details, OTA firmware updates, which I needed to do and was far easier through this interface than the typical Z-Wave hub interface, and controllers for any devices you have set up. It's not the world's prettiest app, but it does what it says on the can and then suck. Back in Home Assistant, everything syncs together fine. The IR Blaster sets up attractively within your dashboard, and in its panel, you'll be able to control the usual suspects, such as heating, cooling, and fan modes. Once the system is on, you can also drag the dot on the crescent to adjust the desired temperature setting for the split system. In the top right of the panel, the vertical ellipsis, also known as a kebab menu, I'm reliably informed, will take you to a few quick defaults you can change. I set my fan speed to default to low as saving money is the name of the game. The history option here will let you deep dive down into details around past measured ambient temperature and how the split system has been used via the ZXT800. Of course, smack bang in the middle of the screen is the room's temperature. It was about 20 hundred hours at night when I was filming that and you can see that despite it being nighttime, but despite all the shutters being closed and having been closed all day, it was still really hot in that room. So you can understand that when it's so hot in a room so late into the evening, air conditioning units are typically running in this property 24 seven. And that's true for just about every room which are typically occupied. You can also get a sense of how we could potentially use automation and the ZXT 800 to really reduce that bill. Automation stands to save me a lot of money, but up until now, we haven't really looked at any automation. We've looked at connection and we've looked at pairing. There are a few more steps before we can say, okay, this thing is intelligently saving us money. It's intelligently automating my heating or my cooling or indeed my audiovisual system. To get automations up and running here takes a few more steps. And Home Assistant exposes everything we need to automate the ZXT800 in a straightforward manner. Heading into the automation panel, we can set up a logic flow quite easily. A simple one to turn on the air conditioning when the temperature gets quite high looks something like this, whereby when the temperature is measured at above 28 degrees, we can tell the ZXT800 to turn the split system on to cooling with a 24 degree set point. Super simple to set up, and testing this shows that it works fine. Now that automation doesn't actually save us any money, and that's our stated aim with the ZXT800. And the reason it doesn't save us any money is because it's missing that ingredient that's necessary for intelligent automation. It's missing context. It's 
devoid of the context of whether or not the room is in use. It's uh, devoid of knowing if there's anyone in there at all. The easiest way to solve that would be to introduce a sensor. A door window sensor would be a cheap, inexpensive way of doing that. And to go back to the earlier idea of guests leaving a door or a window open, we could use a door window sensor to know if a window had been opened or a door had been opened and turn off the split air conditioner accordingly. We could also introduce more advanced sensors to improve the quality of that automation. This is the Atrium OmniSensor. It's a Z-Wave Plus 800 series multi-sensor that includes amongst its data points two that are particularly useful for this uh, automation. That is temperature sensor and the motion sensor. By employing the motion sensor from this alongside the ZXT 800, we can turn off or at least turn down split systems in the event that no one is present within the room. That would be a distinct cost saving and one that would target more instances of activity um, and more instances of time than the door window sensor alone. And of course, we could employ both sensors together to develop a really complicated and really advanced intelligent automation. And that's desirous because that helps save us money. That's it. That's the ZXT 800 connected to Home Assistant in a nutshell. Connection was straightforward. It was easier. And it was certainly easier than connecting some other devices and particularly easier than connecting other IR blasters, which I've used in the past. Out of the box, will it help me reduce my electricity bills? Yes, certainly. Will it shave hundreds of them? Maybe. Will it slash them by a solid thousand pounds? Probably not. At least not without employing additional sensors. As you can see, out of the box, it's great at manual control. It's great at simple automations, but complex automations outside of temperature and humidity based ones, you need to employ other sensors for that. And key amongst them are motion sensors, presence sensors, and door window sensors. Other alternatives to the ZXT 800? Certainly. For instance, I have Dakin systems, as I mentioned before. There are actually modules that you can buy that upgrade each of the split system heads to operate with Z-Wave. So not only can you automate them, but you can un also understand how they're presently operating. That's something the ZXT cannot do. It's a one-way system. It outputs a code, but it doesn't get a code back. It gets no acknowledgement of what it's actually done. It doesn't know if your system is on or off. There are also other Z-Wave blasters on the market, including those from Remotech. They have older models available, sometimes cheaper than the ZXT 800. But with each of those comes some limitation, and I don't think that the price difference really justifies looking elsewhere. The ZXT 800 is amongst the most advanced, courtesy not only of using Z-Wave, but also courtesy of the fact that it's got the broadest uh, catalog of IR codes that's available in this class of product. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the ZXT 800, drop us a line below and we'll try to get you the answer. If we don't know it, we'll ask Remotech and try to get it to you.